Welcome into a brand new episode of the Whole Story Podcast. And this is a little different. This is the first one that is actually via Zoom. Meredith Gorman, reporter for Nesson, joining us live via Zoom for the first time. And it's actually funny, Meredith, if you go back in time and you look back at our first interview that we did together roughly three years ago, it was over another platform that no longer exists. So it almost feels like we've gone back in time in a way. Oh, I know. I think we did that on Google Hangouts, right? Google Hangouts, yes. And now, once again, I was joking with someone this morning. It's like I've gone back to podcasts from my bedroom in my house, what I used to do in high school. And it feels just like we've gone back in time. And this is just such an unprecedented time where I would have never thought come first week of really April, April is this week, just a few days away, that I would be doing a podcast from my house in New York and not from Dean College, but here we are. I know, it's unbelievable. You know, the amount of changes that everybody's going through right now is just unbelievable. And, you know, for me, Nesson has basically a home set up for me. I have lights, we're getting microphones, so mm -hmm. we're going to be prepared to do some on-camera stuff from home for the foreseeable future. <laughs> So, of course, now a reporter for Nesson, and you just started full-time with Nesson just a couple of weeks ago. So what is this transition like been for you? I'm sure it's a little bit different now, now that you've kind of been thrown into a situation. Obviously, you were covering some Celtics games, and, and of course, you would most likely be covering baseball and hockey. But now there are no baseball and hockey or Celtics to cover at this moment in time. Yeah, you know, it's just super, it's a big adjustment for sure. I mean, I spent about a month at the office before all of this happened and we started working from home. But, you know, I think it's in the best interest of everybody that these sports leagues are on pause right now. Hopefully everything, you know, gets normal sooner than later. But it's definitely been an adjustment. And I think part of it is having to get creative with content now. You know, we're doing a lot of stories on what players are posting on social media and off the court type of things because, you know, Boston sports fans still want to know what's going on. So we have to still pump out a lot of content, but we've been switching over to a lot of digital stuff. So it's it's been good so far. And with Tom Brady leaving the Patriots, of course, we had our hands full with a lot of content, but I'm sure it'll slow down and we're just going to have to keep getting more and more creative. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned Tom Brady and the Patriots and anyone that knows about you know that you worked for the Patriots and yes. you covered Tom Brady. Now Tom Brady is no longer in New England. He's uh, roughly a, a few states away now in Florida. Now what can Patriot fans have to look forward to this season for the first time in 20 years without number 12 in New England? I mean, of course it'll be different without Tom Brady at quarterback, but I don't think that Patriots fans need to be stressed out and think that the team's suddenly just in rebuild mode. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bill Belichick is still running the team. There's still a lot of the veterans who have been on the team for a while who are going to be in that locker room next season. And honestly, you know, I think if I had to guess that the team does have a lot of confidence in Jared Stidham. I mean, some of the veterans have spoke to the media in the past couple of weeks, and they've all emphasized that they trust him, that he works really hard, that he's mature. And, you know, I think Stidham's going to be going to be the guy. Um, but it's interesting to see Brian Hoyer back too. And I think Hoyer's experience is unique. You know, he's been a starter around the league. He's played for a lot of different systems, a lot of different teams. And he's also been in New England, you know, two other times before, you know, his third trip back this time around. So, um, you know, Brady might not be there, but there's a lot of veterans who will be able to embark, impart their wisdom on the rookies and the younger guys. And, you know, I don't think that all hope is lost for the Patriots, but it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially in the AFC East, because I feel like for the first time ever, uh, in the past 20 years, you know, the division is up in the air. <laughs> exactly. And there's so much talent in this division now, especially the Bills creeping up behind the Patriots now. And they seem like they have almost in certain ways taken over the title reign, basically, of the best team in the division from this point of view right now. 
Yeah, you know, it's so hard to know what every team is going to look like, especially before the draft, because, you know, who knows what the Patriots will do during the draft. Um, but that being said, I mean, the Bills have definitely added some really good additions this offseason. So I do think it'll be very interesting to see, you know, what happens in the AFC East this coming season. And of course, hopefully, that being said, that the football season even happens because none of us really know how long any of this quarantine is going to last for. Mm -hmm. Definitely uncharted waters. I keep trying to compare it to things in the past and there really isn't any. You know, no. some people in the baseball world compare it to back in the early 90s when there was no baseball due to a strike. But they had some sort of inclination when eventually baseball was going to return. Mm -hmm. But with this, we simply don't know. And it goes for every other sport. But let's switch gears again. This podcast is focused on the whole story and the story of particularly your career. Mm -hmm. Northeastern University, right in the heart of Boston. What was that experience like for you? And what would be one of the biggest takeaways that you had during your college time? For sure. You know, going to school in Boston was great just because it's a really huge sports city and there were a lot of opportunities to intern and get hands on experience here. And I truly think, you know, outside of the classroom, doing that hands on experience is what really showed me that, hey, look, I really want to be a sports reporter and stay in sports because you know, you just learn so much more practical experience when you're out in the field. That being said, you know, um, if I had any advice to anybody who's an aspiring reporter or anyone who wants to work in sports media or just media in general, I would say, you know, immerse yourself in every opportunity, you know, don't say no to anything and just try and gather as much experience as you can, even if it's not exactly what you want to be doing, because that's exactly what I did when I was in college. And not only did I build a great network of colleagues and now friends that I work with all the time, but I learned so much. And I think when you're in front of the camera, it helps so much to know what's going on behind the scenes. And the production experience I had through my internships and whatnot has just been so beneficial now that I'm out in the real world. You spent basically your whole career in the New England area and what was kind of one moment looking back at your time that when you first were thinking of what exactly you wanted to do your, in your career, what moment did you have that said, okay, this is exactly what I want to do, whether it be sideline reporting or being an actual reporter, two di very different things, but similar uh, characteristics that you can almost translate, same thing with play-by-play -play in sports, or if you're a news reporter, if you're at a crime scene, you're still giving the play-by-play -play of it. So what moment did you have that kind of almost gave you the heads up of this is the career path and also you know that I can be successful doing this? You know, I've always loved telling people stories. And I think early in college, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do traditional news or go down the sports route. And it wasn't until I really had my first experience being immersed in you know, a live sporting event for work that I realized, wow, you know, this energy is really bringing out my passion. I want to be a sports reporter. And that was in 2013. I was a college student at Northeastern and I had the chance to work the World Series uh, for the Red Sox as like a media relations assistant just for the week. Mm -hmm. And I was working all the World Series home games, but the thing was, it was conditional. So like, I was only working those games if the Red Sox ended up making it to the World Series and lo and behold they did and it was just I mean the energy was unbelievable I grew up a Red Sox fan so getting to be at Fenway Park during the World Series was an experience that first of all I never thought I would ever you know be lucky enough to experience you know you never know when your team is going to make it into the World Series um, but that being said just the energy the passion you know it was just unbelievable and I was like all right this was kind of like the pivot the pivotal point uh, in my sports journalism career because you know I networked while I was working that and it led to my first internship at a Boston station and from there I just you know kept the internships going and whatnot and I think that it was when I was in my senior year of college and I started sideline reporting games at Northeastern, it showed me, you know, 
I'm going to need to get a lot more reps in front of the camera, but the only way to get better is to get reps. And um, it's just kind of been, you know, one domino falls after another, but it all starts with, you know, really focusing on what you want to do and then trying to find the best trajectory and take them, take the most advantage of every opportunity that you get. When you look back at the career that you have had up to this moment in time, what's been one of the proudest moments that you've had? Man, you know, covering Boston sports, I feel so fortunate. You know, there's been so many incredible experiences and the players that I've covered have just been unbelievable and, you know, so kind and there's been so much good content to cover. But I mean, I would say the pilot of my career so far has been, you know, was covering the Falcons Patriots Super Bowl. Um, I was in my first job at the Herald out of college. They trusted me enough to send me down for nine days to Houston to cover the Super Bowl. And I was a one man band with all my gear. And I remember, you know, just sitting on the field after the game when everybody had left the stadium except for the media members and I was editing my stories. And I was there until like 5 a.m. just editing content. And I just kept thinking to myself, wow, I'm so lucky, you know, here I am a year out of college covering a Super Bowl. And at the time, I never knew if I'd be able to cover another one again. Not only was it just an, a Super Bowl, it wasn't any, you know, ordinary Super Bowl. It was the greatest Super Bowl comeback of all time. Uh, so I'll never forget that. And when I think about Tom Brady's time in New England, even, I feel so grateful for, you know, the experience that I had covering him because because of him, I got to cover three straight Super Bowls. Now, when you talk about the one-man band aspect of a reporter, can you kind of give listeners a little more detail into what that looks like? Because I don't think too many people would truly know about what actually goes into covering a game like that just by yourself. Yeah, so essentially as a one-man band, you're shooting your own material, you're editing, you're producing, you're going on camera, you're doing it all. So I think that you have to be prepared to walk around a lot, carry a lot of equipment, but it's also just such a great learning experience because you're doing everything. And in this industry now, I think it's so important to be able to do everything. And, you know, even at this point in my career, I've found myself, you know, shooting my own stuff and editing my own stuff to this day. And I think, you know, having that one man band experience really was the foundation, you know, of my reporting career. And it's just been so important. When you worked with the Patriots, what was it like covering Tom Brady? Of course, not too many people have was able to cover him at the extent of what you were able to do or any longtime reporter with the Patriots were able to do. You actually got more of a feel of what the atmosphere was like on the field during the live action of either before the game started, during it, or even after. That's the overall atmosphere of what Tom Brady brought something different to the Patriots? I mean, Tom Brady's effect, you know, on the games at in Foxborough was, it was just electric, you know, anytime Tom stepped on the field, you know, everybody stopped and stared. And I think it also goes off the field. I think Tom Brady is, you know, my experiences with him have been incredible. He is just such a nice, great guy. And it was such a privilege to cover him. And I think it kind of extends into the Patriots organization. It's a really well-run organization. Um, I feel so, so lucky for the opportunity that I had to work with them. Um, but seeing Tom Brady, it's just, he treats everybody the same. It doesn't matter if you're a football player, you're a media member. He's so kind. He's great. I think that Tampa Bay is going to love him too. And it's crazy because you see how the Tom Brady effect has even trickled down into Tampa Bay. You know, the people waited in line online for season tickets. I'm sure the ticket prices have skyrocketed. You know, people want to see Tom Brady play. And he's obviously a very great football player on the field, but I think he's just as great of a human being off of the field. And that says a lot about him. Meredith, my last question for you again. You've been at Nesson for full time for over a month now, and this is kind of again uncertain times. But what kind of going into this position? What's your main goal? What is something that you want to accomplish in the next few weeks coming? You know, Alex, I just love telling people stories, and obviously, right now, working in an uncertain time where sports are put on hold, 
I think you have to get creative. And I think a good challenge for me now during this time is finding other ways to tell stories that are important and finding those stories and digging that, digging for them right now because obviously nobody could have ever prepared for this, but I think it's just utilizing those skills you've learned along the way and getting creative with stuff. And I'm excited about this challenge. And of course, I wish that things were different, but none of us can, you know, really do anything about it except for, you know, stay home, be safe, keep healthy. And I'm looking forward to, you know, making the most of this. Well, Meredith, thanks again for joining this podcast today. Where can everyone follow you on social media? And again, follow your storytelling that you do at Nesson. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Alex. And you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. My handle is at Mayor Gorman. I have a Facebook page that you can like, and uh, I hope you guys follow along. But thanks again, Alex.